I'll start out with a few introductions. Uh, my name's Adam Davis. I'm a, the, out, well, let's see. I was the last chair for student activities um, and I'm now a consultant to student activities. Um, the other panelists here can introduce themselves. Hi everyone, my name is Buzz Wright. I am your post high subcommittee chair and uh, I'll see you at the, at the winter conference. So if, um, if you have any questions or comments, feedback, and you see me come up, uh, feel free to, to chat with me. Uh, likewise, my name is Megan Tosh. I am the vice chair of the student activities committee and I will also be around for the entire conference and you are welcome to ask me any questions you like. Uh, hi, my name is Ben Oliver. I'm the chair uh, for the Student Activities Committee. I'll be on this conference call as long as I can before I um, have to leave for class. Um, like all of my previous uh, panelists said, uh, you can come and chat with me anytime you want. Uh, all of us will be there for the entire conference. Um, that's one of the reasons we're on webcam, so you can see all of us, so you kind of know our faces before we attend. Uh, hopefully to make you a little more comfortable um, when you actually come to Orlando. And I'm Katie Thompson. I'm the staff liaison to the Student Activities Committee. So I am Ashray's staff. I will be at the Winter Conference and I'm sure you all have gotten tons of emails from me about the conference itself, registration, this webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch and I'll also see everyone in Orlando. Thank you guys. So for those of you, I, I'm assuming that you guys all know uh, and hopefully have your tickets, uh, flights or whatever, however you're planning on getting to the student program. But it, the student program's February 1st and 2nd in or Orlando at the host hotels, the Hil Hilton Orlando at 6001 Destination Parkway. Um, all of our events for the student program will be in the Orlando 3 room which is in the lower lobby. Also be sure to check in at registration in the bookstore, which is located on in room Florida four, which is on the lower lobby. It's nice, both, both, uh, both rooms are in the, uh, in the lower lobby this year. So registration and then our event room will be in the same, same level and should be easy to find. Look for signage, um, yeah. I'll just add that you'll have to go to registration when you arrive to pick up your badge. Um, if you need kind of a certificate that you've attended the conference, which technical sessions that you've gone to, what you participated in while you're there, they do scan badges. Um, we scan badges for parts of the student program. So you'll get um, an email, I think, at the end of the conference showing what you went to while you were there. Um, but you'll have to do all that at registration. The bookstore is there. If you haven't purchased any tickets for any of the social events or the tours, you can also do that at registration. Um, if you just don't want to do it in advance and change your mind about attending anything, that's the place to go. So also please know that, um, you know, while we have the student program, you guys are free to attend. Your, your registration gets you into any of the technical programs or any of the seminars, any of the technical committees that you'd like to attend. You guys have a carte blanche, um, access to anything that you want at ASHRAE during the next, you know, during the conference. If, uh, you know, hopefully you guys are interested in the student program that we put on. If there's something that, something else that interests you during something that we're putting on, feel free to attend that other session. Um, hopefully the, hopefully what we're putting on will be, be something that you guys are interested in as well. But if, you know, say you're doing your senior design project on, I don't know, ground source heat pumps and you want to go attend that technical committee or some technical session about that, go ahead and split out and go check it out. So we encourage you guys to do that. We want you guys to do what, you know, get as much out of this conference as you can. Um, the next slide is just kind of a map of the general area um, of Orlando. You know, it's in Florida. Hopefully you guys know that. So, yeah. Um, You, got, um, you know, one thing that's really great about ASHRAE is that they're in this student program is there are students that will be coming from all over the world. If you look here, this is a map of everywhere that ASHRAE has a region. Um, 
So you'll have we we will have students there from South America, from the Middle East, from Asia, all over the U.S. And it's a really great time to get to know other, you know, HVAC and R students that are you know kind of in a similar boat as you. Um, as you can see, you know, when I first got into ASHRAE, I didn't really know about the different regions or anything. Um, if you kind of look at this map, you can kind of see maybe where your region is, or you can look it up ahead of time. Most of the regions have a regional dinner, usually on Sunday night. Um, and again, that's something that's typically posted at the registration area, um, information about that. You may get an email ahead of time regarding, you know, where the regional dinner is. Obviously, it's totally optional. Most regions will offer a discount for the students for dinner that night, um, but you know it's kind of region by region for how that works. Um, if you guys are looking for jobs or looking for people to network with, that regional dinner is a great, great way to do it. Or you know, say you live in New York and you have no contacts whatsoever in California, but you know you want to go live in Los Angeles after you graduate. Go to a Region 10 dinner, you know, and get to know people in that area. Um, it's kind of a neat way to network and uh, get to know, you know, professionals that might be in places where you want to work as well. Yeah, like Adam says, guys, I would uh, definitely recommend that you find out what region you're in. Uh, so you can go to ASHRAE's website and, and click on regions and determine which one you're in. If you're in Arizona, California, Nevada, Hawaii, you're in Region 10, which is my region. And we're doing a joint region with uh, regions two, three, nine, 11, and 14. So there's gonna be one very large region dinner. So if you're in any of those regions, I definitely recommend you, you attend that dinner. It's Sunday night, it's only $15. And it's likely that if you ask a, a full ASHRAE member if they would sponsor you for the dinner, you're probably gonna find people that would love to sponsor a student to attend that dinner. It's great for uh, networking, handing out um, resumes, business cards, getting to know other people uh, in the industry. So I, I definitely recommend at least figure out what region you're in so you can attend that dinner if, if you figure out when it is. Thanks, for, those of you, for those of you that uh, live in Canada, just because I'm biased because I live in Canada, um, you have two options, either region two or region 11. Both of those would be at the dinner that Buzz is mentioning. So. For those of you calling in from Canada, there's only two options. You can always ask me if you can't figure it out too. So, all right. Um, you know, a big question that we often get ahead of time is dress code. Um, to be perfectly honest, you can show up wearing whatever you want. Nobody's going to kick you out. However, um, most people will be wearing something, you know, kind of business casual. And um, these are examples. I don't know what these fools are doing wearing white pants after Labor Day, but um, they're, um, you know, you look uh, as a as a man. I will be wearing a, you know, button-up shirt and slacks, um, dress shoes, uh, socks. Um, I, you know, I'm married. I have no idea what women wear, um, but. <laughs> some type of blouse slacks it's totally fine um you know sequin ball gowns would be fine but probably you'll be the only person in one so, um but you know another thing really to keep in mind uh sorry to jump on you there adam but another thing to keep in mind too is the weather um orlando's getting some pretty decently cold uh, weather right now so if you're used to a warmer climate keep that in mind and then also if you're planning on doing the the tour you want to at least have some some shoes that you bring along that are appropriate for walking um, on a roof and, and around uh, an area of the convention center there. So keep walking in mind, um, and then as well the weather. Yeah, even if you're not going on the tour, you're going to do a ton of walking. Everything yeah. is a ballroom or hallway away, uh, so you're going to be walking around a lot. Comfortable shoes are a big big must. Um. I believe also for the uh, for the tour that I think they do require closed toed shoes. So just keep that in mind if you're going on the student tour, um, be sure to wear closed toed shoes because um, they're not going to let you on a roof and flip flops. So, but you know, bottom line, come as you are. Don't worry about it too much, but just know in general people be wearing kind of um, what the English would call a smart attire. So we look forward to seeing you, however you are. Uh, last but not least, we kind of always plug this. Um, 
one thing that we want to make sure that as you transition from a student to a uh, non-student, hopefully working individual, that we know that in those early years, it costs a lot of money um, to be an ASHRAE. So, you know, the, the full-blown ASHRAE membership can be quite cost prohibitive, and we try and try and shoulder some of that burden for you. So if you're currently a registered student member, your first year out of school, um, we have a program called a Smart Start program. The first year out of school, it's $25. The second year out of school, it's $85. And your third year, it's $110. Um, total cost for two years is only $220. And I can tell you that that's a really, really great way to get into being able to afford um, your ASHRAE membership if your employer doesn't cover that cost. Um, it's something that in order to be a part of, you do have to be a student member ahead of time, but you know, it, it does help with that, with that expense of, you know, I think a full membership's like $269 a year. So just something to, to keep in mind. Smart Start's a great way to, to transition from a student member to an associate member or affiliate member. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Adam. Uh, again, my name is Buzz Wright. I'm gonna go over um, some of the main things that you're gonna see in the schedule when you attend the Winter Conference. So on the first day here, this is Saturday's events. Hopefully you already have your plans in place to arrive in Orlando with enough time to maybe grab some lunch, uh, get to registration, get your badge, and then make your way to our room for the student welcome. That's gonna start at one o'clock in the afternoon local time, and it's gonna run until three. Uh, we're going to have uh, a welcome, a short welcome introduction from our society president, uh, Daryl Boyce. He is going to give a, maybe a five to ten minute uh, presentation. Uh, then we're going to have our uh, grants award re recipient uh, presentation and uh, awards presentation for the grants. Um, and then after that, we're going to have a presentation, a speaking presentation by Pam Duffy. You may notice that this is a, a new speaker. We had a last minute change happen. And so if, uh, if you were looked at previous correspondence that talked about um, Gina Ladner uh, as a speaker, she is not able to attend. So in her place is gonna be Pam Duffy, um, but she's got a great presentation. We're very excited to, to have her um, fill in for that. So that'll go from about two o'clock to three o'clock for her presentation. Um, after that, we have the plenary session, which is with the full-blown ASHRAE plenary. So you're gonna be in another room, a very large room with all of the ASHRAE members. And there's going to be um, some awards done, uh, some information given about ASHRAE and a, a keynote speaker uh, who is Ed Hockley. Um, if you are a football fan, you may know him. He was a referee uh, for 25 plus years. Uh, and he also happens to be my uncle. Uh, so that's kind of gonna be a lot of fun. That's the best um, part about that. <laughs> it's a funny story of how that came to be. Um, if you're a fan of Ed Hockley, uh, you could talk to me and I'll see if I can't get you uh, to, to meet him and, and get an autograph or something. Uh, so that he's going to give a, a presentation during the plenary. Uh, and then there's also going to be some awards given out at that time as well. Uh, after the plenary, uh, we do our yay uh, TC mixer. Uh, yay stands for Young Engineers and ASHRAE. TC is Technical Committees. And we do uh, about an hour uh, mixer game. Um, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. And then after that is the welcome party. And again, this is the entire ASHRAE membership. It's a very big uh, dinner party. It's going to be a top call. Uh, and that may be something that you want to attend as well. It's a lot of fun and it's great for networking and meeting other people. And we'll go into depth on a lot of this stuff next. I probably went too far into it on this slide. So on the Next slide, I remember if it goes directly to Ed. No, it goes to Pam, good. Okay, so this is Pam. Uh, she's gonna give the, the, the technical speaking uh, at two o'clock, I said, like I said, on Saturday. Um, it's gonna be on sustainable uh, and innovation, looking forward and into the future on ways that we can be um, good engineers, stewards of our environment and sustainable ideas. It's gonna be a really neat topic. Um, so that'll be from about two to three. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is some information on Ed. Um, ben put in that he is a legend with huge biceps. So that's, uh, he is the referee. If you've watched football and thought, wow, that ref 
has huge biceps. That's, <laughs> that's the one. He's also uh, really is a really nice guy. He's he's uh, he's an e guy. So I, I think that the the talk will be uh, pretty fun. So that'll be during the plenary. Uh, we're also going to uh, oh let me stay here. Um, the design competition awards winners will also be given their awards during the plenary session as well. So um, if you have any interest uh, about the design competition, you can find out more about that during our student program, of course. Uh, and if you are a recipient of award, this is where at the plenary where you'll receive those awards. Only the first place winners of the design competition will get their award at the plenary, um, but we'll have our own award session at the student welcome, uh, where we're also recognized first place, but the second, third and rising star um, winners as well. Correct. Yes. Thank you, Katie. Uh, after the plenary, we have the, like I said, the Yay TC mixer. Uh, this is great for um, getting to know some of the younger engineers that are in ASHRAE, uh, people that are just a few years out of college that maybe have just been in their new jobs for a little bit. So you can get some great insight from them on getting a new job and what kind of things to expect in our industry. Um, we're also going to play a fun poker game during it, uh, and that's going to basically give you a lot of information about the technical committees or the TCs that are available for you to attend. And I, I think we go into that a little bit more depth um, in a future slide. And we do, it's right here. Uh, so the poker run is uh, the way that you'll get to go, uh, get to know the technical committee. So you'll go around to the different representatives from the committees, uh, learn a little bit about their technical committee, what, what they discuss in their committee, and uh, see if any of them interest you. You can, of course, like Adam said earlier, attend any of these technical committees. You can sit in, there's, there's no charge to do that, and uh, they're very interesting. They can be um, uh, something that you can participate later in life in. If you want to join one, I'm on a couple. Uh, if you have any interest in specific areas of our industry, those would the, be the technical committees to focus on. But during the poker run, it's kind of an opportunity for you to go around and uh, see a lot of different technical committees that ASHRAE has, uh, because you may not be aware of all the things that ASHRAE is involved in. Um, so you might so uh, find one uh, that's of interest to you. And so we make a little game out of it. There will be prizes uh, for the best poker hand. So it should be fun. Uh, and like I said, good networking, good good uh, time to meet other people in our industry. After the uh, Yay TC mixer, we will do the welcome party. Uh, it is at Top Golf. The cost is sixty dollars, uh, but it is a lot of fun. So if you're able to attend, you'll you'll add this registration. Um, either you could do it the day of when you when you go to registration, um, or you can do it online now. Um, I don't know that they would sell out, but you may want to go ahead and do it online if you're planning on attending now so that you're, you've already got it taken care of. Uh, you'll get dinner, it's great for networking, and you'll get to play some golf, so it should be a lot of fun. And that's Saturday night. Sunday, uh, hopefully you didn't stay out too late Saturday night uh, because we start early on Sunday morning with the student program. Uh, at eight o'clock is our career panel. Uh, we're going to have three panelists that are going to uh, field some questions that we've uh, pre-selected for them regarding what it's like in our industry. And then we'll, they'll also be able to um, answer your questions. So if you have any questions uh, about career path that they've taken, uh, that'll be a great opportunity for you to ask them. We have chosen three um, individuals from different areas in our industry, so you get you'll get some answers from three different um, aspects of what HVAC engineers do. Uh, after that, we've got our talk with Nadia from nine until ten. Um, if you were at the winter conference last year, you saw her already. She does a great presentation, and we're excited to have her back to give another presentation on indoor um, farming. After that, we are going to do a K-12 activity with Sophia Fairweather. She is a young entrepreneur that um, is very inspiring. She, we, we got to find out about her through an app that she developed for uh, HVAC related things. Um, she is, I can't remember what grade she is. I, I wanna say she's 13 years old. And uh, she's just gonna be with us and participate in the activity that we're doing. 
um, it's going to be a design challenge. So it should be a lot of fun. If you were at Winter Conference last year, what we did was we made spaghetti towers with spaghetti and the team that had the tallest tower with the marshmallow won. Uh, we had little prizes for it. This year, I'm not gonna tell you what we're doing yet so you can't practice, but it will be a lot of fun and we will have prizes uh, and we'll run that from 11 till about noon. Uh, after that, we'll have a, a quick lunch. And then after the lunch, we're gonna go into our student tour. I'm gonna go a little bit more depth on each one of these things. Uh, here are the panelists for the career panel. So Megan is going to be one of our panelists. We have uh, Michael Shireen, as well as Joe Chin. And um, so this, this panel is fantastic. We've got a, a great breadth of knowledge and from different areas in the engineering field. So um, should be very, very informative. I'm excited about this. After the career panel, like I said, we have Nadia. Uh, she gives the great presentation on the indoor farming. Um, we can go ahead and go to the next slide. Here's Sophia. Um, yeah, I've already kind of said everything I wanted to say about this, this activity. It was a lot of fun last year, uh, so I do highly recommend it. It's just fun to, instead of be sitting and, and watching technical presentations all day long, to actually get to kind of get up and move around and, and do something with your hands and have a little friendly competition. So. Um, I think this will be a lot of fun. Uh, after that, we have a presentation from Julia Keene. She's got a presentation for ethics and engineering. Very good topic. Uh, I saw it a few years ago, and it was one of the, my favorite topics that I've seen um, that's not quite engineering related, but definitely something that you will deal with in your uh, life as an engineer. So it's a good topic, and Julia is a fantastic speaker. And after lunch, like I said, we will do the student tour. The tour this year is going to be of the Orlando Convention Center. Um, I think it's the second largest convention center in the world. And we're going to get behind the scenes and see uh, the cooling system, the heating system, as well as their uh, solar panel uh, installation, which is enormous. Uh, on the roof, which will get access to their roof to see all the solar panels. There is over 6,000 panels. And I think that they say it's like four to five football fields in actual size. So it's a huge solar array. It's over a megawatt, I think, of, of energy that they um, acquire up there. It's a really neat installation. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun. That's gonna go from 1.30 to about four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and we're planning on providing some reset, uh, refreshments uh, after that as well. After the tour on Sunday, um, this isn't on a slide, but I'll mention again that a lot of regions do their regional dinner on Sunday night. So find out what region you're in and try to figure out whether or not they're doing a regional dinner that night. If you have any questions about that, feel free to contact uh, me, Katie, anybody that you see here. Uh, we'd be more than happy to help you figure out what region you're in and get you connected with that region so you can participate in those regional dinners. Uh, the next thing uh, is the AHR Expo that is located in the Orlando Convention Center. So the same convention center that you will do a tour of is also going to be where the AHR Expo is. And if you've never been to an AHR Expo, you definitely want to at least try to spend some time checking it out. It is really uh, fantastic. It's huge. There's tons of vendors. Um, good luck trying to walk it all. It's There is a lot to see. Um, it's three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, but I know that a lot of students end up going back on Monday. Uh, some stay through Monday and will go back uh, home on Tuesday. So if you're able to uh, spend any time at the HR Expo, I highly recommend it. And it starts on Monday at 10 o'clock, I believe. Yes, 10 o'clock, 10 in the morning on Monday. Um, yeah, next slide. So That's other, it. Yeah, that's, uh, following on what Buzz said, if you can do the tour at the Orange County Convention Center, I've done it before, it's really cool. So I definitely recommend if you don't, and that will sell out. It's not sold out already, is it, Katie? No, I think there's still a few spots left, but we do sell out our student tour every year. So if you are interested, try to register in advance instead of waiting until you get to registration. Yeah, definitely do, and, and that's a really it's, good It's one. really close. It's really close to selling out. Cool. And it's also really close. We'll walk over from the Hilton to get there. <laughs> yeah. So remember those walking shoes. 
Um, other things that are going on beyond the student program that Buzz covered are some recommended technical sessions. So first of all, what is a technical session? Um, something to be aware of, there's a couple of things that are happening at the ASHRAE conference simultaneously. So there are these technical sessions that I'm going to talk about that are part of the conference program as well as there are technical committees, which are volunteers having meetings. And so um, Buzz talked about the POCA run with Ye and the TCs that sort of introduce you to all of the different technical committees. That is slightly different because those are groups of volunteers working through an agenda, um, working for a specific purpose to either um, help fund research dollars and, and get uh, information out there. They're writing handbooks, chapters of the handbook, they are sponsoring some of these technical sessions that are available at the conference. Um, but the technical sessions are a little bit different. This is more what you would expect from a conference. So uh, co going through this list here, conference paper sessions. Conference papers are eight page peer review paper that are papers that are published as part of the conference. And so when you attend a conference paper session, you will see two or three conference paper authors presenting on those topics. Uh, debates are exactly that. There are There's a pro and a con and there's a discussion that happens on a specific topic where parties debate both sides of the topic. Um, forums are a bit more relaxed. So forums are the session on this list here that is off the record. So it's meant to be a more casual conversation where nobody is recorded. The forums are not available afterwards for people who weren't in attendance to listen to. And so you really get to dive into a topic off the record with the safety that comes with that and hear a good debate in that regard. Um, panel discussions are what you expect. Uh, you're going to see a series of panelists, usually with different viewpoints on a related topic, talking about that topic. Uh, seminars are just presentations. They don't have a paper to go with them. Technical paper sessions are like the conference paper sessions, but they're more detailed. So usually a conference paper session is going to be more about application, whereas a technical paper session is about fundamentals and theories. So those are double blind review. They're usually closer to like 30 pages in length. So they're considerably more in depth and technical. Uh, and then workshops lastly are interactive. And you'll see that we've got a workshop here in our included list of sessions that we recommend for you guys to attend. Uh, so how do you participate? All you do is show up. You will have to have your badge that you pick up at registration to get in. So Katie made note that you know that registration is on the same lower level as where the student program is going to be on Saturday. You need to go there, pick up your badge. It's got your name on it so people know who you are, but it's also got a little QR code or a barcode, I don't remember which, uh, that they'll scan. You'll need that to get in the room for all of these, but that's it. That's the only credential that's required to enter the technical sessions. Um, how do you participate? You will listen, you will take notes, you will uh, ask questions if you want. There's a moderator in the room that will give you some directions on this at the beginning of each session, but essentially whenever it is appropriate to ask questions, you will walk up to a microphone and say who you are and who you're affiliated with. So for most of you, that's your university, uh, and then ask your question. Uh, and you do that at a microphone because all of these sessions are recorded and made available through a virtual conference for anybody who doesn't attend. Uh, so what can you say and not say during a session? You cannot be commercial. So you cannot get up there and plug a product or services. Um, I don't think that will be an issue for most of our student attendees. Most of you aren't there trying to sell anything, but otherwise just keep it professional and use your best judgment. Uh, remember you are on the record and if you're not sure about saying something, reflect on why that is uh, mm -hmm. and that should make it pretty easy to sort out whether or not you should say it otherwise all questions of all levels are fair game so i think on the next oh i think i have one more yeah technical sessions uh that are the technical committee meetings so i told you there's this uh program that's happening with the conference as well as there are thousands of volunteers gathering in orlando concurrent with this meeting uh to go through all of the different um activities that we do as volunteers on the technical branch of ASHRAE. So uh, I mentioned some of these different things that TCs do before. Uh, if you want to find out more information about TCs, I believe it's ashrae.org slash TCs is the website. And I think that's plural. I think it's TCS, not just TC. Someone correct me if I'm wrong there. Uh, but you can see all of the different TCs. You will learn about them as well in the poker run that we're doing on Saturday. 
if there's something that's a specific topic you're interested in, all you have to do is show up. There's not even going to be somebody at the door scanning your badge for a TC. Just show up, and whenever they get to a break in the agenda, they uh, whoever is chairing that TC will likely ask you to introduce yourself to the room. That way people know who you are, and you can feel free to raise your hand and participate and volunteer in any capacity you want. TCs are often really excited to have new members, especially young members that have enthusiasm and fresh ideas to bring to the table. So you are very welcomed and encouraged to ten, attend these TC meetings as well. Um, all of these technical sessions, both the TCs and the stuff affiliated with the conference are all in the program guide. So that is in paper form at registration if you're interested. That is currently available on the website in PDF form as well as it's in the ASHRAE 365 app. So if you don't already have the ASHRAE app on your phone. Um, there's a lot of great things in the ASHRAE app, but it is super useful during the conference. It's going to have floor plans. Uh, it's going to have the full schedule. You can set up your schedule in advance and have it programmed in there. Um, you'll get announcements about things that are happening. One year I got an announcement that they were handing out beers in the bookstore. That was really cool and a very welcome announcement pushed to my phone. <laughs> Uh, you can reach out and chat with other attendees that are registered for the conference. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff in there, so I do encourage you to download that and save the paper, save the trees, and, and don't bother with that. And I think on the next slides, Katie, yes. So um, outside of the student program that we put on for you, so starting at 1.30 on Sunday, if you are not attending the student tour, which I encourage you to do, but let's say you don't get a ticket in time before it sells out, uh, a couple of sessions that you might want to attend on Sunday. This seminar at 1.30 that the Young Engineers Committee is putting on, this is an introduction to refrigerants and refrigeration concepts for YAY members by YAY members. So that's a great opportunity to learn a bit more about that R in HVAC and R. Um, I'm not gonna walk through all of these. I've, we've got a slide here for each day. I'll just sort of highlight one session on each slide. I believe these are in the brochure. Uh, these are sort of sessions where we've gone through the technical program and made some recommendations as to things that are at a good level for a typical college student and things that might be of interest to you. Um, so, for example, the workshop that's here at 10, uh, 2.15 on Monday, that's going to be a workshop, so that's interactive. They're talking about best practices for mentor and mentee relationships. Um, many of you probably already know the value and have started to learn the value of having that mentor-mentee relationship. So this is a great way to learn how to transition that into a professional life and where to get good professional and career guidance and how to grow and build a relationship like that uh, in an interactive way. On Tuesday, uh, I really like the last one here, the history and the use of air changes per hour in HVAC code standards and guidelines. I think when you're new to industry, you hear a lot of Practitioners talk about, well, that's just how we've always done it. Uh, and it is healthy and welcome that young people challenge those ideas. But it's also important to understand the history of where some of this stuff came from. Uh, so a good start in learning the lessons beyond what you've learned in your academic career of like, why do we do things the way that we do uh, will be that seminar on the history of air changes. So I would recommend that one specifically. And then if you're still in town on Wednesday, and I hope you are, and you've had time to go to a bunch of the sessions, the technical program, the AHR Expo, um, I really like the seminar on climate adaptation, looking at risk assessments and different solutions. So not just building a building for it operating next year, but what are worst case weather scenarios and how is that going to look in 20, 30, 50 years when that building is likely still around. I think that's all we have for suggested sessions, and we're probably getting pretty close to yes, asking questions. Um, I don't know if we've had any questions come through yet. You guys are all in listen only mode, so you're all muted. Uh, but if you can type your questions in the question box, Katie, our amazing staff liaison, can see those. She'll relay them to us, and we would be very happy to answer questions for you guys. And while you're thinking about that, I'll mention one other thing in the schedule that we didn't cover, and that is also uh, Monday morning, we do the Student Congress. Uh, so if you've never attended a winter conference, you may not know about this. Um, it is, and correct me if I'm wrong, Megan, I believe from 8 until 10 in the morning? I think it's 10, 10 to 12. Yeah, that's adjusted to your to time zone. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> 
So 10 o'clock in the morning, so you can sleep in a little bit, uh, we do what we call the Student Congress. And essentially, it's uh, your opportunity as a student member to get in a room with us to give us your feedback. So things that you liked, things that you didn't like, things that, things that you think we should change up for next year. Uh, it's where we get a lot of feedback from, from you on what we can do to make this student program better for next year. Uh, we do try to get, I, I believe it's just one student member representative from each student branch. So you may not all be able to attend, but if you're not aware of it, um, it is something that we would love to have you get involved with. And we do provide, uh, I think it's going to be a box lunch if you, if you come and, and join and be a part of that. Um, so that is going to be Monday at 10 in the morning. It will be on the schedule. So if you see on the schedule Student Congress and you're confused as to what that's for, just remember it's, it's basically your opportunity to give us feedback. I'm using um, slides because we had a question just asking to show the Monday sessions again. If anyone was wondering why, I went back. Oh, thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and these suggested sessions are also in the student program brochure, uh, which I know is in paper form at registration. And is it on the website in the student zone, Katie? I'm not sure. I believe so. I think we have the recommended sessions there. Okay. Um, if not, you know, feel free to contact any of us and we can help get you that information ahead of time in terms of what sessions the Student Activities Committee recommends. Um, another thing we didn't touch on that occurred to me, I believe there are still tickets available. Monday morning at 7 a.m. is the Women in Ashray breakfast. So that's a 90-minute breakfast program. I think the tickets are only 35 bucks, um, so it's not as expensive as some of the other activities. Uh, so if you're interested in that, coming out and talking about diversity within Ashray, it's always a good time. It's always a really good event. I encourage that. Another thing I just thought of that I think was mentioned in passing earlier about um, networking, um, but if you are looking for a job or even if you have a job or you're a student, um, bring business cards with you. People will ask for them. You'll start a great relationship with someone. They might ask for your details and it's much better if you can have them a business card with your email or um, phone number on it so that you can keep in touch. Yeah, you don't necessarily need to bring a bunch of copies of your resume, but business cards definitely are something that you may get asked for. Um, so yeah, like Katie said, you, if you attend like the regional dinner or the Yay TC mixer, it's great to have them available to give to somebody. And you can get like business card paper from any office supply store and just print it on a printer on campus or at home. You don't have to like contact a printing company and do anything real fancy to have business cards. They are. If you don't already know, they're very accessible to make them yourself. One thing that I, I'd like to chime in and mention as well is, so this is my sixth year doing student activities and my seventh um, winter conference for student activities. ASHRAE members love students. They get excited about students. Um, they're excited that you will attend anything. And, um, <laughs> you know, please just, don't hesitate and speak up. Don't be shy. Don't you know think that, oh gosh, this is a stupid question. They're going to think that I don't know anything. Um, your students, we don't expect you to know anything. Um, show up and, and just you know be in the room, be you know don't don't be shy. So that's that's all I can do is encourage yourself, um, you know, be outgoing. Don't just sit there and huddle with your five buddies that you came with. Um, get out there and introduce yourself and um, and don't be shy. Uh, so it looks like we've got um, questions about questions about food are my favorite questions. Uh, yes, we provide lunch on Sunday. I think you'll see Katie has answered that in the chat. Um, there's also a question about an SSPC. Oh, so I am not going to get all of this exactly right off the top of my head, but I am a voting member of an SSPC, uh, SSPC 140. So those are the standards committees, the SPCs and the SSPCs are the committees that work on the standards specifically. So that would be like 62.1, 90.1, 55 are probably some of the ones you know. And then of course there's a bunch more. <laughs> um, so they operate the same as technical committees. They've just got a slightly different scope in that we generally publish revisions and updates to standards every three years. So all of those revisions have to go out for public comment and get voted on and things like that. Um, but you are welcome to attend those the same as um, 
technical committee meetings. I do recommend that if you see the subcommittee meetings for different standards in the program guide, the subcommittee meetings are often more interesting because that's where the work actually gets done. And then when the full committee meets, they just sort of go through subcommittee reports and vote on things that they have to vote on in full committee. So um, highly recommend going to one of the subcommittees that's of interest to you. Uh, we've just had another question about the award ceremony. So at the Student Welcome on Saturday, that is when we will recognize all of our design competition winners. So that session between one and three, we'll have a welcome from the president at the start at one o'clock, um, a presentation from some of our grant winners, and then most likely it will happen between 1.30 and 2 before our main speaker takes the stage um, where you'll be recognized and get your plaque. Yeah, and on that topic, uh, if you are an award recipient, we definitely would like you to be sitting towards the front of the room. This is what we did last year and it worked out pretty well. So we try to get all the award recipients at the front of the room uh, so that we can easily uh, get through the streamlined process of having you come up, accept the awards, take the photos. Uh, so we, we will be reaching out to you in another email, maybe I already have, uh, telling you that, and we'll have uh, reserved tables for you. Uh, so just keep that in mind, if you're an award recipient this year, uh, come to the front of the room on Saturday. Do we have any other questions at the moment? Um, are there any required sessions or events besides the orientation on Saturday? And I'll say there's nothing really mandatory for you to, to attend. You're encouraged to attend it. We're putting this program on for you as attendees. Um, but the only other thing that we are putting on after the plenary on Saturday is the YAY, um, which stands for Young Engineers and ASHRAE um, Student Mixer event on that Saturday evening. And we do provide um, food um, at that as well. But it's just a really good networking event um, to meet a lot of people on well, what is a lot of people's first day of the conference. What was that question again, Katie? How was it worded? Just are there any required sessions or events besides the orientation on Saturday? So the plenary is available to everyone um, after our welcome, and then you can come back for the, the mixer in the evening to meet a few people, have some food. Um, but that's yeah. the only things that are happening on Saturday. Perfect. So just, just to be clear, um, that's there's nothing required from us at all. You know, we assume you guys are all adults um, and are capable of attending whatever you'd like to. Um, if you're being hosted by a chapter or your student branch or, you know, whomever, um, check in with your advisor, check in with your chapter and see if, you know, there's anything that they want you to go to specifically. Um, us, ASHRAE um, student activities, we don't have any requirements for you guys to show up to anything but your student branch advisor may. That's the last question I received. So if anyone has any more, feel free to type them in. And Katie, this is recorded and the recording is available later? Yes, that's right. Um, we'll email it out to everyone. So if you have friends that had class at this time or they're working already, but they need to know about the conference, um, we'll send this out to everyone tomorrow. And another question is, what should I prepare to study before each of the technical sessions to maximize participa participation? I am, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I would not study anything, but I am not the right person to ask. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you can just show up. It, it's also okay just to listen. Um, each of the TCs have websites, so depending upon the TC sort of depends on how up to date that website is, but it's possible if you know where you want to go and you look online that their agenda is available. Um, you can also potentially email the chair of that TC and ask for a copy of the agenda. That way you know what they're talking about before you walk in the room. Uh, but even if you just want to show up and listen and observe and check it out, like that's totally fine. Uh, and if you show up and you listen for like half an hour and you're like, yeah, this is not for me, you can get up and leave. Um, it's okay. So I, I wouldn't just just soak in the experience, just see what's going on around you. It's, you don't have to be a, an expert on anything to walk in the door and listen. So uh, it just to piggyback on what Megan said, it's okay to kind of float in and out too. Um, I remember sitting in a room um, in the windowless room in a basement level of a conference and they were talking about how to define the word damp 
And like after 15 minutes of that, I was like, God, I want to do something else. And so I, you know, <laughs> so it's okay. You know, if, uh, if, if you go in there and you think, Hey, this is something that I'm really excited about. And it turns out that it's not go ahead and take off. You know, it's no problem at all to float in and out as you want. Um, that's totally fine. Or if you walk into the wrong session, yeah. <laughs> like, why are they not talking about lighting? <laughs> what meeting is this? <laughs> it happens. So yeah, like Adam and, and Megan said, I, I don't think that you need to study anything. It, if if you want to look ahead of time and see what TCs are out there to see what would be interesting and find out what room they're in and what time they're meeting, that would be the only thing that I think you would need to do. You know, coming coming to the maybe checking things out ahead of time and coming with some site some type of game plan, you know, some type of schedule um, for what you want to do. If you just show up and go, hey, uh, I think I'm gonna go check things out, and you wander into the into the um, the conference, you're gonna be totally lost. Um, you know, obviously we have our program going on, but um, you know, if you just kind of are going to stumble around um you're you're going to be lost um if if there's something specific that you want to look into go ahead and um come in at some other time or come in with a game plan yeah that's a really good idea if this is a huge conference so the idea that like oh i'll just like walk down the hall and like pop in a room or two that's tough yeah it's you're much better off to look in the app or online ahead of time and try to have a plan for what you're going to do other questions nothing else all right guys don't be shy come and say hi yeah if nothing else figure out what region you're in and and Go and figure out if you can go to that region dinner. Uh, figure out what you, who your regional representative is. We there's 14 regions in Asheray, and each one of us represent a region. You can find out who your regional representative is. Uh, go meet them. They'd be happy to help you out if you have any questions. And of course, uh, like we said earlier, if you have any questions or issues that come up while you're at Winter Conference, feel free to come up to us. We are we are there to help you out. So just don't don't be shy. Feel free to come talk to us. Where's the information on the joint, what is it, 9, 10, 11, 2, and 3? Uh, if you go to regionx.org forward slash dinner. Yeah. So it's, it's region 10, but we use the Roman uh, numerals. So it's regionx.org forward slash dinner. Um, and you can pay online with a credit card there. It's $15, I think, for students. Um, but like I said, if you show up, find someone in your region and say, hey, I'm interested in going to the dinner. Do you think you know I could attend? You're probably gonna get somebody to, to sponsor you. Say, oh yeah, sure, come, you can be my guest and they'll they'll pay for you to attend. More, more than the dinner, it, it'll be a fine dinner and all, but more than that, it's just the networking, getting involved, uh, finding new friends, meeting people um, in the industry. It's a lot of fun. So I, I definitely would recommend you try to do as many things like that as you can. Yeah, that looks fun. Another question that was actually just emailed to me um, was asking how many students tend to um, come to the conference. So we usually have around three to 400 students um, at the student program events. Uh, there may be more who might be doing a PhD and they're more on the technical side of things, but on average, we end up with about three to 400 students. Um, And if anyone's too shy or they're listening to this on a recording and has any questions, if you're coming to the conference alone, you're not sure if you have a local chapter, you haven't been involved in Ashray much in the past, uh, feel free to email me. I can let you know who's coming from your area, if there's anyone you'd like to meet up with, if there's a particular technical session and you're not finding things on the website, um, just send me an email and I'll be able to help you um, beforehand. So. That you don't that you come up that you can come to the conference with a plan and maybe have a few people lined up that you can speak to. Okay, guys. Well, I think that uh, that concludes this orientation.
Uh, we, we really appreciate you um, checking this out, getting uh, involved in ASHRAE, being a part of your, your local area ASHRAE. Uh, we're excited to have you attend our student program uh, at the Winter Conference. Uh, please come, introduce yourselves. We want to meet you. We want to chat with you. Uh, thank you very much. And like we keep saying, if you have any questions, just let us know. Thanks. Thank you.